Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about how we separate enantiomers, or in other words, how we resolve them into their individual mirror image isomers. As we saw in the previous video, trying to do this with reactions is very difficult. In order to separate enantiomers, one needs to have something else chiral to interact with. Or you have some macroscopic property which manifests, such as the case of Louis Pasteur's crystalline salts that showed mirror image shapes for those crystals. He was able to make those large enough that he could separate them with a pair of tweezers. Not all molecules can be separated with a pair of tweezers. So what we can do is do a chemical resolution. That is, if we have a mixture of enantiomers, let's say we have a 50-50 mixture of this molecule on the left, 50% R configuration and 50% S configuration, and we can carry out a reaction where we can combine it with something else that's chiral and optically pure, then we can make a pair of diastereomers. So if you do this reaction, to make a salt, in this case, we're just doing an acid-base reaction where we're protonating the amine group from the carboxylic acid. We have two different salts, and these salts are diastereomeric in relationship because the nitrogen part of this has the same configuration, whereas the acid part of this has opposite configurations. So in this case, these salts might have different melting points, they might have different properties that we could find some physical property to separate them. So in order to separate enantiomers or resolve enantiomers, we need to create some kind of diastereomeric relationship with something else chiral. That can be done with ionic bonds, such as I've shown here, or with covalent bonds. So here, for example, if we have a 50-50 mixture of these two amines on the left, we can react that to form a covalent bond to something else, which is pure one enantiomer. And now we can make two different diastereomeric products and hopefully they have different enough physical properties that we would be able to separate them. So that is what we refer to as chemical resolution of enantiomers or separation of enantiomers. I'm not going to dwell on this subject. I wanted to introduce this to give you an idea about what we do as chemists. One final note about stereochemistry. If you see a molecule written with a squiggly line, what that indicates is that the stereochemistry is a mixture. So we're not drawing it with a bold or a dashed line, we're drawing it with a squizgle line. If we just use a single plane line, that indicates that it's in the plane of the board or not determined. This indicates specifically that we have a mixture of two enantiomers or two configurations at that center.